Women who eat high amounts of yogurt every week lower their risk of heart attack by 30%. Men with hypertension who eat yogurt are 19% less likely to suffer a cardiac event. Researchers believe this is due to yogurt's fermentation and calcium content. Wow, it sounds almost too good to be true. I mean, if yogurt does actually reduce your risk of heart attack like some kind of miracle drug, then why aren't we selling yogurts in little medication style bottles as a health food? Oh wait. I'm back baby and today we are dusting off our prescription pads and getting ready to hit the dairy aisle pharmacy because if this pans out then we may have just healed the world. I'm Ben the Angry Vegan and this is Keep a Vegan. And all the stupid things I say and do and never really stop when I should never have begun. I really ought to drop it but it's faster when you don't even have time to stop and think about the things that you were saying because they never really matter but it's empty spaces in the air. Fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. Oh no, oh no. All the million little empty spaces in the air. Fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. Oh no, oh no, oh no. But I... Look, Paul, if you want to be on the show, you can just ask. You don't have to keep dragging the valued reputation of your middle-class jizz rag through the mud just to get my attention. Instead of focusing all your attention on little old me, you should focus on what really matters. <sighs> like upsetting the gays, or foreign people, or people who like foreign people. <sighs> just about everyone, really. Okay, so a scientific study has said that yogurt reduces heart attacks. Let's take a closer look. Eating at least two servings of yogurt a week lowers the risk of women with hypertension suffering a cardiovascular event, such as a heart attack or a stroke, by up to 30% and men by 19%. Study author Justin Buendia from Boston University says that the results provide important new evidence that yogurt may benefit heart health alone or as a consistent part of a diet rich in fiber fruits, uh, vegetables, and whole grains. King, hold on. That's like saying yogurt does a great job in stopping your head from hurting if you happen to eat it alongside not yourself in the head with a claw hammer. The article then goes on to a basic overview of the study's parameters and then goes on a related slash unrelated tangent about good bacteria and calcium. So how do we verify that the article isn't just the bad habit reinforcing piffle that usually passes for nutritional guidance in this uh, paper? Well let's take a look at the study itself. Scientific studies can be easily weighted to show a particular outcome depending on how the analysis is carried out uh, which individual things are being measured, how variables are grouped or accounted for. It's not a case of lying about the results. It's a case of changing the shape of the study to suit what you want it to. Uh, I'll be doing a full video on the lots of examples and how that works in the future. For now, however, the best thing to do is take a look at who undertook the study and then who paid for it. Now, if we take a look, if we take a look down in the uh, disclosure section, we can see that the authors declared no conflict of interest. In other words, there's nowhere within the planning or delivery of this study where a bias could be identified. Oh, apart from here, where we can see the study was paid for by the National Dairy Council, which is the organization in America whose job it is to sell cow's milk to US citizens. Oh, and the Bell Institute for Health and Nutrition, which is the nutrition center for General Mills, the corporation that owns the controlling stake in Yoleplay, the world's biggest yogurt franchise. And nope, that doesn't come up in the Daily Mail coverage at all. Weird. So the study starts out by mentioning previous studies that show dairy might be good for heart health, including this one, uh, based on a self-reported questionnaire from the 70s and 80s. This one, which recommends you eat low-fat dairy, not high-fat dairy, and was paid for by the Dutch Dairy Association. The Cardia study. This meta-analysis that includes the phrase, this, together with the belief that milk is fattening. And the DASH trial. The authors of this study basically went through the NHS, or Nurses Health Study, and isolated yogurt consumption. Now, taking a look at the results, we can see those numbers come up again, 30% and 19%. However, and this is a really important distinction, here we see the insinuation that eating yogurt lowers your risk, whereas the study points out that higher consumption of yogurt was associated with lower heart risk. Why is that significant? Because there is the potential for no causation. Point the first, those candidates who had the lower risk, they also were the most physically active. They were the less likely to smoke, less likely to drink, and they had a higher DASH score, which means basically they ate more fruits and vegetables and whole grains. In other words, they were healthier people. And this kind of makes sense. Yogurt as a general rule, at least in the UK, isn't advertised as a luxurious snack, but as something to be healthy, is to be consumed by young professionals or given to kids because it's good for them. Let's take a look at an example questionnaire. How about this example questionnaire? Because it's the questionnaire, it's the exact questionnaire the candidates used in the study. Because I do my research 
Paul. The questionnaire lists yogurt in the dairy section, but there isn't an option for non-dairy yogurt. One of the biggest weaknesses of self-reporting questionnaires is that the parameters of the study may not mesh with the definitions held by the candidates. This is gonna be less of a thing back then compared to now, but if you had a portion of uh, non-dairy yogurt like Alpro, where would you put it on this list? I'd warrant most people would put it here, under yogurt even though this would potentially skew the results. So this study shows that healthy people are on average more healthy and some of them eat yogurt. Good study guys, money well spent. So in conclusion, oh no, there's one more, there's one more thing. It's the article mentions two things that might be linked to heart health, probiotics and calcium. Probiotics, the most common found in yogurt being lactobacillus, can help with all sorts of vaginal and butt stuff. But if you feel you're missing out on your old lackey bee, grab yourself some pickles. There's, there's lactobacillus in the brine making that jar of shit taste to be a fungus. As for calcium, we need to stop holding up dairy as the one-stop shop for calcium. Ignoring the potential dairy has for leaching calcium from your bones and causing osteoporosis, we are the only species stupid enough to drink milk after weaning, and we're the only species gross enough to do it with the milk of another species. Explain to me then, if calcium is so necessary for bone health, how is it that elephants grow tusks, rhinos grow horns, and this majestic f can grow 40 pounds? That's 18 kilos of bone on his head, only eating plants. Seeds, beans, leafy greens, tofu, all sources of calcium that babies don't have to die for. That's the end of it. So what do we learn today? Don't drink, don't smoke, eat fruit and veg and whole grains, and get exercise to avoid heart attacks. Always follow the money on scientific wonder studies that promote the opposite of what logic dictates. Elk carry 18 bags of sugar on their heads, even though they must be terribly protein deficient from all that meat that they don't eat. And the Daily Mail is full of shit. Ah, <sighs> feels good to be back. You can find the scientific sources on the uh, on the Keeper Vegan website, keepervegan.com. Uh, all the information is up on the source archive there. You can also find me on social media. If you've got a buckaroo to spare, you can always head over to Patreon, throw some money my way, and you'll get some cool shit, including the behind the scenes for videos like this one, where I swear, novel I know. As always, Save the planet, save the animals, save yourself. Go vegan. Ow. Uh, what did you think of the new intro? How sexy was that? Uh, and yeah, head to Patreon, support the show, uh, help me do what I do, and we'll do stuff together. Ah, I got pins and needles.